And it is 5.33. Dave Yonkai, L.A. Tarot. One uh, other quick thing to tell you. It's called Our Mission. Uh, this is uh, to provide physical environment within the city of Hazleton. This is the Hazleton Integration Project. Um, Joe Madden today called it the uh, worst kept secret in Hazleton. Today it was formally announced uh, that the organization has bought the former MPB school that also was known as Holy Spirit Academy for a while. And for a while it was even the annex to Arthur Street to the Hazleton Area School District on uh, 4th and Cybert Street. And uh, Ann was there today. There were a bunch of announcements, and she's got all of it for you tonight at 10 o'clock on Late Edition. Can I make a quick comment about sure. that? Okay, this week it was reported that Vince Young, the Tennessee Titans quarterback, blew through $30 million in yes. three years. Yes, And when you take a look at what Joe Madden is doing in terms of giving money back to a community and really investing, I think that's a wonderful thing. It's like a stark contrast. And I was thinking about that when you were talking about that uh, type of uh, thing that uh, Joe Madden is doing for the community. Well, I'll tell you what, Madden is not, a, especially if you're a baseball fan, some of the names he's brought to time. I mean, Yogi Berra was yes, here last, last year. year. Tino Martinez. Right. And I know this is a strong Yankee area. A lot of Yankee fans remember the heroics uh, Tino Martinez did with uh, the Yankees. He's got uh, some of the Rays players uh, coming up. So uh, right. it's 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 quite an impact. Yeah, you're getting yeah, to see a lot of people you wouldn't otherwise get to see. Exactly, so. exactly. Um, the biggest news today, two big things. Um, four more layoffs in the city of Wilkes-Barre. If you haven't heard, you know, yesterday Mayor Layton announced that uh, there were 11 fire. Firefighters laid off today for DPW workers, and he says he's not done. I know we're going to talk mainly about Mello, but your thoughts about the layoffs, first of all? Well, the layoffs are the layoffs have to be done, unfortunately, and I think that maybe if there had been a little more concessions with the unions, that, that might have been something that they could have saved. But again, Wilkesbury City, as well as Hazleton, granted, these three cities are in major problems. We have major problems not, all over, yeah. Not in small part, though, because of large union contracts and people who are making a lot more money than the average taxpayer is yeah. making. And anytime you have employees in a city that are making more money, it becomes top heavy when you have people in cities that are trying to survive on salaries that are less than the people that are unionized. And I think I think it's time to revisit. And I know people are not, are going to be upset when I say this, but it's time for to, to revisit unions and union contracts. It, it, sorry, it was done in. Uh, I'm, I'm, right? no, I'm go, monopolizing go. this. I'm, <laughs> I'm right, turning it to you. Um, Ed Randell did it in Philadelphia, and yes, I think it's did. time for people to take a look at that on a government basis. And uh, to be honest, the only elected mayor who could do that would be a Democrat because a Republican exactly. would get savage. Democrats are supposed to be friendly to unions. So if you say, hey, let's rope it in a little bit, you might get someplace if you're a Democrat where a, for where a Republican you're not. The pensions don't seem, seem to be as much of a problem in Wilkes-Barre as they are in Scranton and Hazleton. Hazleton right. is a big pension hall and Scranton has the most ridiculous pension deal I've ever heard in my life. Apparently this was Mayor Gene Hickey's idea. Right. Where the living people who held a position get half the increase the current one does. For example, if a fire chief gets a $20,000 raise, the, fire, the retired fire chiefs get $10,000 raises in their pensions. It's not too hard to figure out how Scranton wound up in a mess with that. I've never heard that anywhere before. And Gene Hickey was the city controller before he became mayor of Scranton, and I think that was the deal that was brokered for him to be elected yeah. mayor of Scranton. And, well, and but look at the consequences all these years exactly later. Exactly, right. And, and that's another thing, too. A lot of times when political deals are struck years later... Yeah, you um, think of it for the moment. Them, What's it going to do for me this November? Not thinking that 20 years down the road there's exactly. going to be a big disaster disaster coming from it. Leighton has taken a lot of criticism for this, but I'll give him credit for this much. He's been trying to talk to the union since September saying, please, right. let's talk. Let's do something. Maybe we can keep this number down. Maybe we can keep the tax hike down. Um, in Scranton, Darty just dropped the budget, said, here it is. In Hazleton, you knew he did exactly the same thing. No talking to anybody. Just boom, here it is. Right. Leighton at least tried, I think. I believe so, and I agree with you 100%. I'd feel a little bit better, though, if uh, Mayor Leighton would um, do a little bit of a kickback in his salary. I know that yeah. he has a salary freeze. I'd feel a little bit better if the city council would do the same thing. And I wonder, now finances, right? We're talking about finances, right? We're talking about money. Where is Kath Kathy, Kane, um, uh, Kathy Kane and she all of this? Has she is the city any controller. Of the council meetings we've covered, and she is indeed the city controller. She's a former city council president as right. well. And she 
has not been, she's MIA in this whole thing. And I would think that if you're doing a budget, you would have to consult the city controller. Especially since she's just, since since she had been there as the previous eight budgets exactly. were put together. And now she's in charge of trying to run the city on that budget as the city controller. And it's evident to me that the guy that's running the city budget is the mayor. And that would tell me that Kathy Kane is not doing anything. Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't but argue with. It. Where is she? All right, we gotta. Uh, we'll come out, come out wherever you are. We'll bump over to Joe Garbacci again. We'll talk about Bob Ello's sentence and maybe a little bit about this alleged controversy regarding John McGee, okay. which I think is a lot of nonsense. But we'll talk about it uh, if we have time when we come back. First, Weather Center and Joe. Hey, Joe. Five forty-six on this Friday afternoon. Congratulations to Carol LaRose of McAdoo and Harold Warg. Harold, I'm sorry I didn't get what uh, town you're from, but we do have your phone number. Both of you get a pair of tickets to see Christmas with the Celts tomorrow night at the Wiltsey Center in Hazleton. If you didn't win this afternoon, we got two more pair to give you tonight on Late Edition. Former Senator Bob Mello said it's today. I heard a lot of people saying he's not going to get any jail time. He's not going to get any jail time. I didn't believe that. I thought he would get some. 16 months is actually a little less than I thought. I thought he'd get a minimum of 18 because the sentencing guidelines were 18 to 24. So I guess you can say that Judge Joel Slomsky went slightly light on it. But I still think this is, I think there were more people who thought he wasn't getting anything than was getting something. Well, I thought that he was going to get about a year. And I thought it was going to be a little less. A little bit about Bob Mello. Um, I had a couple of interactions with Bob Mello in the 1970s. I was in dinner at the Woodlands. This is going back like years. And he came over and said hello because he had known me from, you know, working at WVIA. But then right around maybe 1982, 1984, the persona that I feel anyway, my opinion about Bob Mello's persona kind of changed when he became part of the elite leadership. Yeah. And all of a sudden you had to go through intermediaries uh, with the press and things like that and um, you know he had the big uh, picnic up at Montage Mountain where you know he greeted people but again there was always like the clam bake the clam bake yeah right, the clam okay. bake at Montage Mountain but you know you always had to go through layers after that and that kind of struck me about Mello what is also interesting about this is that six statewide powerful people are now in jail. Are I going thought he jail. was the seventh. I thought Mello actually made it the seventh. Could it could be the seventh, yeah, right? Yeah, I mean, you got Deweese, you got uh, Purcell, Purcell, Vion, uh, yeah, Horry, right, Vion. <laughs> and then of course, you know, Vince Fumo. Fumo. So it's like six or seven, and that really says a lot about, you know, the corruption in the state. And the other thing is, a lot of people are saying that his successor, I mean, you know, John Blake basically got in there because he had Bob Mello's blessing. And, and he I think, got that endorsement late. He right. only got that like maybe two or three weeks before election day. A couple of weeks and then all the money started to pour in. But, um, you know, I think that he was going to get, um, you know, uh, within the guidelines. But you really wonder, you know, um, what's going on in this guy's mind? Because, like, for years he was, you know, the chosen one in the state of Pennsylvania. And even as late as, as 2008, 2009, he was even thinking about running for governor yes. in 2010. That so, was the word at the time, yeah. And you really wonder... I wonder if this came as a surprise to him or if he knew it was going to happen. But apparently the um, uh, the uh, uh, prosecutors are happy with the uh, verdict yeah. and I guess the uh, his lawyers, too. You told me that his lawyer had a little bit of a dust up with a reporter. Uh, outside. An old fr a mutual friend of ours, Boris, Boris. Crouch and you, who is uh, the chief political writer for the Scranton Times. Apparently Sal Cognetti, who's Mello's lead attorney, didn't like one of the questions that Boris had evidently asked him earlier because right. Boris went to ask him a question today and he turned to the other reporters and said I'm not going to answer that question because I don't like the guy who asked it and then they had a little bit of a back and forth in front when uh, Gary and Mike Lula were up shooting it today we caught some of it on camera I mean it's not that big of a deal I've known Boris a long time and Boris is tough but he's fair I don't know him to have had any long running battles but, with anybody but anytime you see something like that that really diminishes the process and it makes everything a little bit smaller than it really needs to be and I understand that the this whole thing went, well, from Gary Pern, uh, that it went six or seven hours, Yeah, right? well, it was supposed to start at 9.30. It got yeah. started on time. They didn't, come, they didn't pronounce sentence till 
I don't know, 2.30, 2.45 this afternoon, so it was a long time. Right, yeah, yeah, there were a couple of five-minute breaks in there and everything. Now, with these charges, I'm sorry, this has to be said. I, I've had very few dealings with Bob Mello, only as a reporter talking a couple of times. I guess once I was at WAZL, right. and then once or twice at the Standard Speaker. I'm found to be very haughty, very dismissive, look down at the press, especially from Hazleton. Who the hell is this guy? <laughs> to waste Not in my time. district, yeah. But I have to say, I think these charges are minor. Yeah, I I mean, he certainly is not the first guy to use his staff to sell tickets to a fundraiser. Right. And I think we've gone so far the other way that it's gotten a little ridiculous. Now, for election night, I called a couple of our state representatives to mm -hmm. find out where they were going to be so we could put our election coverage together. And one guy in particular, I'm not going to mention him, but one state representative, his secretary told me, Mr. Tehran, I really can't tell you where he's going to be. You're going to have to call the campaign office. Now, right. obviously, she knew, but, I mean, that's a little ridiculous. Right, and I really think that um, I agree 100% because common sense has to take over at some point. And if you – where do you draw the line between, you know, driving somebody to the hospital for a test? Or even it was even brought up about his daughter using the Senate office to type a paper. Yeah, I I mean, we're getting a little out of hand here. Yeah, I, think. I really, I, I, I really agree. I don't think there was anything egregious. And plus, let me do a devil's advocate here. Should a guy like this, with those charges, belong in jail? You know, I mean, you have to really if say anybody, yourself. If anybody, Bob, Bob Mello, I don't know that this sentence would have been that harsh. And I know yeah. that sounds a little unfair to say, but while he has legions of supporters who would go into battle for him, he's also got people who hate his guts right. tremendously. Uh, and there's always suspicion about other things. He was never charged with anything else. I don't know if this is a first or second year legislator who does this, that the sentence is this harsh. Right. And do you want a bed and a cell taken? up for this type of crime. $36,000 to keep him in jail a year. Right. For this type of crime, when you have drug dealers going amok, you have right. other people killing each other. You talked about Sherman Hills at the beginning of right. the program. You know, you really have to really think, and, and I believe me, okay, he was convicted, it was wrong in the whole bit, but you really have to take a look at the ledger and find out whether, you know, it's worth it at all. I agree. I've said for years, and we have a, a, a correction secretary and John Wetzel who agrees with me, which I'm happy to say. We have too many people in jail in Pennsylvania. That's right. all there is to it. It cost way too much public money to pe keep people in jail on minor charges. Well, I don't dispute this sentence. Hey, it's fine with me. I don't really care. You do have to ask the question, is somebody who is guilty of something that cost $80,000 that he repaid, is it worth sending somebody like that to jail? Right. I don't is know. Is the pound of flesh worth it? Yeah. All right. Uh, Joe, come back and wrap things up. Stick around. Friday's Topic A on WYLN. This is the first week of December. <laughs> so yeah, I, I can't believe that. It is. It's that amazing. Yeah. yeah. All right, Joe. Uh, we got to only about a minute left. We have our first, I think he's rushing things a little bit here. We have our first announced candidate for governor. And yes, the race for governor is two years from now. John Hanger, uh, who's been around this area several times. He was on the PUC under Governor Ridge. He was the head of DEP under uh, Governor Rendell. I think he's a long shot. Well, I think he's uh, not rushing it. I think that he's developing a good campaign. He believes that uh, Governor Corbett is vulnerable. And it just might be that he might be one of the people that'll get name recognition for like a long time. There's an eight-year cycle in Pennsylvania. Right. It goes all the way back to 1946. With the exception of Ray Schaefer, who didn't run for a second term. Well, yeah, but he but he, he couldn't run for a second term because the Constitution didn't prohibit him from that. It, it was his, the eight years with Scranton and Schaefer, right? So that was his eight years. Okay. Yeah, and then the Constitution was changed, and then Schaap ran in 1970 for the second right. term. He was the first guy that could run for the second term. But I think that um, he's going to do the bus tour, and I think that... Uh, he might do very well. It's going to be crowded Democrats, uh, and Corbett will wind up being reelected anyway. That'll do it. We'll see you tonight at 10.